The aim of this comparative study is to examine the use of Sigmund Freud's psyche theory in the two culturally different films. I will be doing this by using materials from a range of sources including original films, critiques, publications and other media. The two films of focus are the 1958 film Vertigo, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and the 1976 film Taxi Driver, by Martin Scorsese, to compare the way each director uses Freud's psychoanalytic film theory. I decided to focus on psychoanalytic film theory through Sigmund Freud's psyche or personality theory because he's the founding father of psychoanalysis. He comprised it through the id, ego, and superego. Those three components have been characterized as the three essential parts of the human personality. Psychoanalysis is often used in film to get a better understanding of the behavior and motifs behind action. A quote from Martin Scorsese states about Vertigo, the character, their obsession with the character, the story doesn't matter. I responded to the film very strongly, and the picture stayed with me. I personally was very interested in the way Hitchcock and Scorsese take you through the protagonist's obsession and the kind of man he is in these films. The two films are excellent to compare since there are parallels in both films. Both films include the protagonist in a modern world with obsessions around a woman and motifs of a downward spiraling, mentally and physically, which can all link back to Freud's psyche theory. Freud's theory in Vertigo can be linked to John Scully Ferguson's character and story, which takes place in 1950 San Francisco, whereas Taxi Driver shows Freud's theory in mid-1970s in New York City. This shows the similarities in the portrayal of the characters in different cultural settings. Vertigo is based upon the 1954 novel D'Entre le Mort by Bruno Narcejac. It portrays themes of illusion versus reality, problems of identity, subjective time warp, and the subversion of romantic love. Social and historical hierarchy themes are seen such as class, which leads to the inevitable tragedy of violence displaced into self-reflective other world of film poetics. On the other hand, there are economic and historical themes in Taxi Driver, where in 1974 New York was a filthy city that nearly had to file for bankruptcy. This led to strikes, under which garbage collector strikes, which are portrayed in the film. Jimmy Carter's run for presidency had a big institutional and social economic impact on the film and how it is depicted. Sigmund Freud created the idea of the psychoanalytic personality theory. It is a description of the mind's structure and function. It is based upon three main ideas which Freud used the analogy of an iceberg. He created a more structural model of the mind, the id, ego and superego. Freud called this the psychic apparatus. He states that unconscious desires influence behavior. Personalities have memories, beliefs, urges, drives, and instincts that people aren't always aware of. The top of the iceberg can be classified as the conscious part of our mind. This is what we are aware of. The bottom area of the iceberg can be classified as the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is a lot larger than the conscious. Directors use this film theory as an opportunity to represent the state of mind and conflict in mind of the character. This is also known as man versus self. And it's also used to show the imagination of the character and finally to leave a poignant impression on the viewer. This can be seen in examples such as Stanley Kubrick's 1971 A Clockwork Orange, the 2001 Nanny Moretti La Stranza del Fliego, and Eternal Sunshine of the spotless mind made in 2004 by Michael Gondry. The analysis of this comparative study will be divided into three parts. The superego includes society's morals and values learned from parents and other influences. The superego controls the id's impulses, especially the ones society forbids, such as sex and aggression. The superego also persuades the ego to turn to moral values instead of the immediate satisfaction from the id or the realistic goals. Behavior that does not satisfy the superego can be punished through guilt. It can also be rewarded through a proud feeling after behaving properly. This is shown through different cinematic elements. This scene in Vertigo takes place at the beginning of the film. It is a conversation about Scotty's incident on the roof. Scotty is damaged from that night and has since then gone Vertigo. He feels guilty for what happened. The people around him, including Midge, tell him it is not, which can represent society's morals and values. One element Hitchcock uses to show this is through stabilizing the camera using its shallow depth of field and dialogue. The costuming and color palette play an important role too. The costumes are professional and elegant. 
There is a low saturation and a yellow hue. This signifies the sickness and naive theme. In Taxi Driver, this is the first encounter between Travis and Betsy. It is inside the New York campaign office for Charles Valentine. It is an invite for a date. Travis looks very clean and appropriate as for social standards. He is very polite and behaves properly. This results into a date appointment at 4 p.m. Scorsese also uses color palette and costuming to portray Travis's super ego. Travis's costuming is bright, colorful, and elegant. There's a low color value and a minor red hue. These elements signify passion and power according to the film color scheme. The ego develops to mediate between the unrealistic id and the values and morals of the super ego. It is the decision making component of one's personality. The ego ideally works by reason. It focuses on a realistic way to achieve the satisfaction of the id taking into account of the super ego. The ego is further developed into the film through lighting and color palette. In this medium shot scene, Scotty has followed Madeline, who really is Judy, into a flower shop and is gaining satisfaction from spying on her from a door creek without her knowing. He has gone through great lengths to follow her without her knowledge. The battle between the id and the ego are seen when he rushes back out the way he came into his car before Madeline is able to return to the car. Three point lighting is used in the scene along with the use of natural light. This adds onto the triadic color palette which empowers the ego. Travis returns to the campaign office to confront Betsy. She won't return any calls or stay in contact with Travis after the very awkward second date at an adult cinema. The composition and color palette changes from the first encounter. The costuming is very different. It is dark and scrappy. The color palette has also changed and is contrasting. It has pink and red hue with moderate saturation. It foreshadows anger and danger and violence according to the film color scheme. The id is impulsive and the unconscious part of our psyche, which reacts and responds directly to needs, desires and urges. The id operates on the pleasure principle, which is the idea that every wishful impulse should be satisfied immediately regardless of the consequences. This type of process thinking has no comprehension of objective reality and is selfish and wishful nature. Yet again, both directors use the intensified color palette to represent the psychoanalytic point. Near the end of the film, most of Scotty's id is seen. We see that he has become obsessive and impulsive around Judy's appearances. He wants a suit that Madeline had worn and sends her to a beauty salon where her hair and makeup are completely done in Madeline's style. Scotty's final development is seen in Judy's apartment and the final confrontation in the well-known tower. We see Scotty's true id. He is aggressive, impulsive, which gratifies his desires and urges. He does not take into account any consequences. This is amplified through the use of an intense green saturation in the room, which is associated with obsession and impulses. Like Vertigo, most Travis's id can be seen near the end of the film. Aggression can be seen when Travis faces the mirror and practices the way he pulls his gun from his holster. He is also obsessed around his looks. He ends up practicing for a good while, which signifies his obsession around his impulsive urges. This ends in the confrontation between him and the Mafia pimps, which ends up a very aggressive shootout. He satisfies his pleasure principle of being the good guy and saving Iris. In reality, this is not the case. He ends up killing the pimps, but also gets shot to himself. He does not take into account the consequences of his actions, which ultimately leave Iris in a worse position than she was to begin with. This represents the selfish and wishful nature of the id. This is further developed through the increasing red hue throughout the film, but most noticeable at the end of the narrative at the pimp's house. It is a monochromatic and angelus color palette. There are great other parallels between the two films. This can be seen as a downward spiral. In Vertigo, this is both a mental theme along with a visual theme for Scotty. In Taxi Driver, this is more of a mental theme for Travis. This works along with the psychoanalytic film theory. This can be seen from the transition from the superego to ego to id in the beginning, middle and end of each film. Despite the many similarities, there are also differences. Martin Scorsese was touched and inspired, but he did have his very own style as a filmmaker. Both films use Freud's psychoanalytic film theory, but are portrayed very differently while still using similar styles. In conclusion, 
Despite the culturally different films, both Vertigo and Taxi Driver display the use of Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytic psyche theory within each film to develop the protagonist's character. The use of this film theory allows directors such as Alfred Hitchcock and Martin Scorsese to show the degrading behaviour in Scotty and Travis.